This viscast is concerned with combinations of resistors in a circuit. Pause the video briefly to read through the problem. Now that you've read through the problem, let's begin by interpreting what we're really asked to do here. You can see we've been given a voltage and a current, or a range of currents, and we are trying to provide that current by a choice of resistors here. So the relationship between voltage, current and resistance really tells us we're going to need to use Ohm's law. In addition, because we have several resistors here, we're going to have to think about what combination or combinations of resistors might be useful for this problem. In particular, whether we're going to think about combining them in series, or maybe combining them in parallel, or possibly both. Now let's move on to our development stage in our solution. In our development here, we actually might need to do a little bit of a calculation to get a feel for where we're going in the problem. We have enough information here to think about what resistance range we might need to try to produce this current range that we're given here. And we'll use Ohm's law. We can write Ohm's law to tell us that the resistance is the ratio of the voltage to the current. And we can calculate now, for example, what's the minimum resistance we would need our 15 volts to be applied across to give us current in this range. So the minimum resistance will occur when we have our 15 volts divided by the largest current. In this case that will be 13 milliamps is the largest we want. So that's 13 times 10 to the minus 3 of an amp. And we do that calculation and we see that's going to give us about 1.15 kilo ohms. We can similarly calculate what's the largest resistance we could have in this problem to give us our smallest possible current and that will again be our 15 volts divided by that smallest current which will be 12 milliamps and that calculation tells us that would be 1.25 kilo ohms. So we want to produce a resistance in our circuit across these 15 volts we've been told that's somewhere between 1.15 kilo ohms and 1.25 kilo ohms. And we've only got these three resistors to choose from, one each of a 500 ohm, or we might call that a half kilo ohm, a one kilo ohm, and a 2.5 kilo ohm. So the simplest thing we might try to do is just to put one resistor in our circuit. But we can see none of these resistors uh, matches what we require here. None of these resistors fall in the range between 1.15 and 1.25 kilo ohms. So a single resistor won't work for us. Uh, we could try putting our resistors in series. Now, if we do a series combination, then we know we're going to add the resistors because the total resistance of a series combination is simply the sum of the resistances of the ones we're going to use. Clearly here we don't want anything bigger than 1.25 kilo ohms, so we probably don't want to use the 2.5 kilo ohm at all if we're just going to add them in series. That just leaves the 1 kilo ohm and the 0.5 kilo ohm, but when we add those two we get 1.5 and that's actually too large as well. So it seems as though all of these possible ways of combining the resistors in series gives us something that is too large. What about if we were to combine them in parallel? Now we have to remember that when you combine resistors in parallel, the inverse of the total is the sum of the inverses. Now we can certainly see here this, this mathematical arrangement gives us the property that our total resistance in a parallel uh, combination is always going to be actually smaller than the smallest member of that combination. So if we were to combine all three we should be able to see if we do that calculation uh, and I'll just do it quickly here. And I've written everything in terms of kilo ohms. That's the unit that I'm using here. And instead of 500 ohms, I've written a half. And instead of 2.5 kilo ohms, I've written that as five halves, which is the same number. And now we can calculate one over a half is two. One over one is one. One over five halves is two fifths. And we can put that together to find we get 17 over five, giving ourselves a bit more space here. 
That's 1 over the total resistance, so if we put all of those resistors into parallel, we would find the total resistance would be 5 over 17. Taking the reciprocal of 17 fifths kilo ohms, which as you can see is, is much less than even half a kilo ohm. In fact, if you do that calculation, it comes out to be something around uh, 0 0.3 of a kilo ohm, which is much smaller than we need. And that's what we would expect because we've added three resistors uh, in parallel and we end up with a total resistance less than the smallest. Remember the smallest one was our 500 ohm or half kilo ohm. We could of course choose to use only two resistors in parallel, uh, but even then remember we're going to be less than the smallest of them. So we could combine our half kilo ohm with our one kilo ohm, that'll still give us something less than a half. Even if we combined our two and a half kilo ohm with our one kilo ohm, that's going to give us something less than one. So it seems as though just using series gives us something too large, just using parallel will give us something too small. So it should seem reasonably clear here what we're going to need to do is some combination of series and parallel. And with three resistors, that means putting one of them in series with the other two in parallel with each other. So let's have a quick sketch as to what that might look like. Here might be one resistor, and we'll put that with our other two resistors here in parallel with each other. So it might be that with the right combination of these three resistors, we actually can get somewhere between 1.15 kilo ohm and 1.25 kilo ohm as our problem needs us to do. So now we have to think about what would be the appropriate uh, resistors to place where. You can see that if we put the 2.5 kilo ohm here and our 500 ohm and 1 kilo ohm like that, you can tell immediately that's not going to help us because we're going to add to our 2.5 kilo ohms something here less than half a kilo ohm, but we're already too large with this 2.5. So that's not going to be useful. We can see the 2.5 can't possibly be the one that's in series with the parallel combination. So our 2.5 kilo ohm is definitely going to have to be one of the ones in parallel. Now our choices are do we have the 1 kilo ohm in series with this combination or do we have the half kilo ohm? Uh, it's hard to tell because we'll get, imagine if we went, this is the uh, 500 ohm one right here and this is the 1 kilo ohm resistor right here. We can see now before we do the calculation that we're going to get our half a kilo ohm adding to something that will be somewhat less than one kilo ohm. Well that might add up to something just a bit more than a kilo ohm as we need. If we were to swap these two around it's a very similar argument. We'd be adding one kilo ohm to something that would be a little bit less than half a kilo ohm. Well that might add up to the right amount as well. So it's not necessarily clear before we do the calculation which will be the correct, or which will be the closest, which one might, might work. So just because I've drawn it like this, let's, uh, let's continue with this particular combination that we've got here. Essentially now we're going to move on to the evaluation step and actually do the calculation. So how do we find the total resistance of this particular circuit we have here? Um, well we can find for this parallel combination over here of the 1 kilo ohm and the 2.5 kilo ohm, 1 over that R parallel will be 1 over 1 plus 1 over, and again instead of writing 2.5 I might just write that as 5 halves, it's the same number, and I can do that now. This is 1 plus 2 fifths, and that gives me 7 fifths, and so my parallel resistance here, remember this is 1 over R parallel, will be 5 sevenths, and remember I was working here in units of kilo ohms, so that's 5 sevenths of a kilo ohm. Then my total resistance for the entire combination will be this half a kilo ohm here in series with this parallel combination which we just said was five sevenths of a kilo ohm. And when I do that calculation, I actually won't bother doing it in fractional form, I'll, I can report this here as a decimal. It turns out to be 1.21 kilo ohms, which is indeed in the range that we wanted. If you recall, remember we wanted our resistance here to be less than 1.25 kilo ohms, but greater than 1.15 kilo ohms. Now we can do an assess step at the end here just to make sure that we haven't done something silly that our answer actually does make sense. Um, one thing I could do is to check that I actually get the current that I was asked to produce in the first place. Remember that was supposed to be between 12 milliamps and 13 milliamps. So I can use Ohm's law here, I equals V over R, and I know I had 15 volts, and I can put that over my 
two one kilo ohms that this particular combination gives me and if I do that calculation I actually find I get 12.4 milliamps. Now as I mentioned before it's not obvious that if I swap those around I won't get something similar. In fact I probably will get something similar but I'll leave it as an exercise for you to try the same kind of calculation but now put the one kilo ohm resistor in series with the parallel combination of the two and a half kilo ohm and the 500 ohm and what you should find if you do that calculation is you actually get a slightly higher resistance than 1.2 kilo ohms which actually gives you a current that is too low it's actually going to be less than 12 milliamps